Hi, this is Earl Oliver from Sully's Vintage Wrestling. This is Raj Geary with WrestlingInc.com. This is Sean Reed, boxing writer and undercover low-key wrestling fan. And you're listening to Duke Loves Wrestling. Woo! Welcome back to Duke Loves Wrestling and Happy New Year. That's right. I am the man of the hour, the man with the power too sweet to be sour. Oh, yes. And I'm joined by your favorite Grinch, the sickest man in America, the Boston Bad Boy. You know, it's like New Year, old you. It's just the same old BS. Same crap. Why are you talking about yourself like that? No, I'm talking about you. You're not talking. You You could not possibly be talking about me like that. I'm full of vitality. Oh, yeah? I'm, I'm more handsome as the years go on. You know, before we hit record, Funnier. folks, uh, this guy was literally caught. I thought he was going to cough his life up. He was, he was in the corner. You're making fun of somebody with an illness. I, yeah. Is that what you have to do to get over? You're going to make fun of somebody who's ill? You, it's by choice. Oh, yeah. You could have done the right thing. You know what makes to... me ill? You. You make me ill. Yeah, get out of here. Sitting in this room with you. No wonder I'm sick all the time. I'm sick of you. Sick right in the head to be here. Yeah, you are sick in the head. On this edition of Duke Loves Wrestling Podcast, we have a special guest coming up. Oh. That's right. Who I now? told you. I told you. She, Who now? She's big in the sign language game, man. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, I was told you about my sign language that I know. No, you're not going to do that, that again. She was very upset about that? that. We're going to ask her about that. Uh-huh. She was very upset. You didn't that tell you, her about you that. Were swearing. Of course, she she listened to the show. You know, uh, Sophie. But she Ramirez couldn't hear me. Castillo. It's, it's the radio. Yeah, she's a champion. I think she can, she can beat you up too. So you know, we'll I'm sure I'll be about. hiring her to beat you up. Yeah, uh, but before we get to to that great interview, uh, and hopefully Boston Bad Boy be on his best behavior. Yeah, I wouldn't count on it. What did you do for New Year's, Boston Bad Boy? Well, uh, I went to a little house party. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was all right. Um, did yeah, you it was low everyone key. there with your little sickness? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, I uh, I did. Yeah. And, um, Rude. Yeah, no, it was good. I, and then I went... All right, can I just tell you the worst part about my New Year's Eve? And this is, this is Boston. Uh-oh. This is Boston. Uh-oh. You're from around town. Finished the New Year's Eve party. I don't know, it's like 1 o'clock. Downtown, downtown Boston. I walk over to Government Center, yep, which is where our city hall is in Boston. Big, big plaza, train station, brand new, beautiful, gleaming train station. Damn right, pouring rain. Okay, I ran over there. I go to go in the sliding doors. They don't open. Don't open. Don't open. And there's people in the subway train now. Boston runs trains late, which we consider late. I mean, it's not New York until two in the morning on on uh, New Year's Eve. <clears throat> it's like one o'clock. Got another hour. Hmm. Doors won't open. Door won't. Now there's a crowd of people. And we're trying to get the attention of someone inside, one of the people getting off a train, to like come and open the doors. And this guy walks over. He, the door won't open from the inside. Doors are locked, shut. So we're standing in the pouring rain, okay? Guy comes over, yellow vest on, MBTA worker. Hey, man, young guy. Uh, doors won't open. He's like, oh, last train. It's, it's you know, last train already left. It. You can walk up to Park Street. I go, What? He goes, it's last train. Door, you know. I go, just look inside. It's a glass. You can see all gla- There's people in there, and, and the train's open until two this, 2 this morning. Oh, I, I don't know anything about that. You don't know anything about that? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> they wonder why the MBTA is such a shambles. You're not going to disrespect my state. The MBTA is in such here. a shambles. Wow. And I know you have friends. I, I have. So I'm, this yeah. is a message. Oh, boy. To you and your friends. Oh, boy. Get this together. Maybe they didn't want you on it. Did you ever think about that? He's like, I'll text somebody. Oh. That was his, and there's now there's 20 people standing out in the rain. Oh, my God. Not all of us got the, the time wrong. You know what I mean? Yeah. Wow. What is going on here? I don't want to know. I don't know what's going That's on. That's how I, I started the new year. Yeah. Yeah, on the wrong Imbecile, foot. civil servant, just no clue. You can, you can send all of your hate mail to the Boston bad boy. Hate mail. Jesus. These people are so lazy. Stop they don't it. even. They don't even know their own jobs. Stop Never mind. It. Write hate Stop mail. Stop it right now. You, you, this Next is how you're going to start the it's year. It's probably the same guy that was texting and driving a trolley and uh, <laughs> ramming into people uh, and cars and stuff. Stop that. It's a good friend of mine. Listen, <laughs> yeah, you stop it right now. You know what I saw that was really interesting, and it was on New Year's, New Day. You know the mm-hmm. tag team, former tag team champions. Big E was wearing a diaper. He was the New Year's the baby. The New Year baby. He was wearing a diaper. He stole your look. And he, and he had, you know, he's a big dude, big muscles, you know. I don't know if everyone knows this, but uh, Duke does wear only a diaper when he's in, like a sumo wrestler. He comes in. He's very into Japanese culture, and he wears the diaper. And I've asked him many times not to do it, um, but he insists. He says it gets stop. him into the zone. You stop it. And then you can tell by the quality of the show that stop there's it. no zone. Stop it right now. Jesus. But he was wearing a diaper, and, and it 
you know, people seem to get a kick out of it until we started pulling pancakes out of the diaper. And eating. <laughs> I don't know what the hell yeah, that that's, was. Yeah, uh, that's not good. You know what? You know what bothered me too? CNN. They didn't have drunk Don Lemon this year. No, he wasn't. He, not, he was not there. I didn't. I oh didn't no, they were him. all there. They were all hammered. I did not see uh, drunk Anderson Don, Cooper. Don Lemon. I tweeted Don, out, where is drunk Don Lemon? They were didn't there. See him. They were there. Sure he was they there? were all hammered. All I of did them. Not. Somebody let me know if drunk Don Lemon. Uh, who's my favorite? What's her name? Uh, was it not Aaron Burnett. The other one, the uh, with the shoulder. She got shoulder length hair, blonde. Not Kate, Kate, Kate Baldwin, Kate, something like that. Possibly, she was know. there. She was, she was. They were all. She I don't know how they let them. And I know it's because it's cable. They're allowed to. Sure. You know, like network television because of the FCC, you can't be drunk on on television. It's vibing. But it, yeah. but because of cable, you get around that. I didn't see him, and well, I, I was I asking where my spiked lemon was because I that's what <laughs> I wanted. Spiked Jack. lemon. I didn't want to see Andy Cohen. What is and, up and, with you know? And I'll, all right, you're connecting neurons in my brain here. Yep. Don Lemon. Yep. Makes me think of our good friend and host of Deal or No Deal. Wayne Brady. Wayne Brady. Okay. I saw Wayne Brady hosting the commercial for Publishers Clearinghouse. Yeah, that's true. How many circles of hell is Wayne Brady going to descend? That man is making money. He is. He is so dead behind the eyes. He's making money. He's. <laughs> Deal or no deal, which he looks like he's going to one day just commit murder on that Stop show. Stop it. Stop it. And now he's he's been banished to the publisher's clearinghouse hell. Stop it. As America's friendly black man. Yeah, well, you know, that's who he is. <sighs> that's who he is. I don't think that's who he is. That's who he is. There's a darkness Well, that's, that's behind that's the that's eyes. You saw a little bit of the darkness in the Chappelle show skit. <laughs> well, that's a Wayne skit. Wayne Brady. But I think he was tapping into yeah, something. Yeah, I think he was tapping into his real I, I, self. Well, first of all, I think any of us mm-hmm. who... It's a deal with the devil. Sure. Like daytime television. Even Ellen's going to, she's calling it quits because it's just she's probably going, losing her mind. Yeah. Wayne Brady doing that show, Deal or No Deal, day in and day out and day in, losing his mind. And now, Publishers Clearinghouse. We should it get him on the show. killed Ed McMahon. We should get him on the show. Wayne Brady. You could never get Wayne Brady I on this show. I probably could get Wayne Absolutely Brady on Absolutely not. I'm sure you listen to I'm the worried show. about Wayne Brady. I like Wayne Brady. Wayne Brady, you're invited to come on the show and let us know how you're doing. Okay. You see, like, so, all right. Let's take another to another host. You you got your Steve Harvey doing daytime. He's doing the uh, uh, Family Feud. Yeah, and he did the. But he's not trying to hold on to sanity. No, not like at Wayne all. Brady's trying to hold on to sanity. It's true. Steve's it's true. gone completely cuckoo. Yeah, he's crazy. He didn't care. Yeah. yeah. So he just he's fine with. Well, it. he knows he gets paid to be crazy, so it's okay. I just think it's just like Wayne Brady's like I'm the coolest guy all the time. Everything's funny, and I'm gonna go <laughs> home and you know. Kill my cat. <laughs> it's just We're like... going to bring him on the show. We'll, we'll get it straight from the source, all right? We need... You know what? We need to get him... We need Don Lemon to interview him. That, there it is. And then you get everything. You, you get, get it all. Everything. We get, you get it, it you all. get it all. Spiked Lemonade and Wayne Brady all together. He should have a show called Spiked Lemon where he does cool interviews. <laughs> Boy, if they steal that idea from us... Call us. I'm going to sue. Call us, Don. Call us. You know, speaking of making a lot of money, did you see this thing with, with Floyd, May- Floyd Mayweather, the boxer? Mm-mm. So he went over to Japan... And he had a, a boxing exhibition. Okay. Didn't want to call it a real match because you know he's undefeated, right? Oh, so exhibition's a way to get around exhibition it. Exhibition with a Japanese kickboxer. <laughs> Not oh, a boxer, no. a kickboxer. This is why. This and is it, a and bad it was idea. a boxing match. Okay. So the kickboxer couldn't kick. And Floyd Mayweather just going to. He beat the daylights out of this kid. Yeah. Beat the hell out of him. Well, if it's like saying. It's I don't like, even think it was a minute long. I mean, he might have well just removed his legs. Dude, like, put a guy in a ring and you just take his leg. I could beat. You know what I mean? He beat the hell out. You know how much money he made off of that? Over nine million dollars, off of off of one minute. Wait, who? Mayweather. <laughs> Mayweather. Where the other guy made? Not enough. Whatever he made, it was. <laughs> Whatever he made, it was Let me not tell enough. You, so I'm so impressed and pissed off about well, that. Well, it's same like time. It's, it's like ridiculous. it's like he went to Japan and the Japanese were happy enough to just throw someone in the ring, just start throwing people in and let them just kill them. Yeah, but can you imagine that? Who the hell agreed to those terms? He made over nine million dollars off of that. That seems low. Beat somehow. the hell up for a guy nine like million him. Dollars to fight some nobody. What did he make of his last big? Oh, he made like I don't know, hundred million dollars. Yeah, that's okay. Crazy so like you're that. saying just yeah. for an exhibition? Just for an exhibition, beat the. I mean, just and he probably made more than that. There's probably bonuses and things like that. Well, right, so. endorsement deals and probably stuff. All those guys do nine stuff million in Japan. dollars he made off of this, beating the hell out of some nobody. I kind of feel bad if I was him. <sighs> like I'd maybe be in the ring going. Okay, you want me to kill this guy? I know, literally. All what right, fine, I'll do it. Do you, think he, do you think he held back a little bit? I'm sure. But he, I wonder how much those guys have a gauge. Like, I wonder how much a guy like Floyd Mayweather, hmm. 
can control his attack. Well, he did it to, to Conor McGregor, where he he carried him throughout the match and then just finally just beat the hell out of him. Do you think that was strategy, or do you think that's literally him able to control his hitting force? His I think he could have he could have knocked Conor McGregor out in the first round if he wanted to. Really, he's the, he's one of the greatest of all time. So you're saying he, you think he could just if he went full juice? Yeah, he would have gone. He could have killed Conor McGregor. That wasn't even a fight that sh- Reed told us that. Read from Pugilism Co. He told us that. I want to know, like, if if we had him here right now, mm. and uh, you you were sitting across from Floyd Mayweather, mm-hmm. like, would he kill you with one punch? Yes. Well, I don't know if kill me, but he probably would not. Like, me what are the out. chances that he would kill you mm. with one punch? He, I don't think he could kill me, but he would knock me out pretty pretty clean. I wonder if he'd snap your neck. Hitting what's, you. What's wrong with you? Is that possible? <laughs> what is wrong with I you? I wish we had Reed on here. If he could tell us uh, if it's possible for a f- human fist to break the neck of somebody. You know what I mean? Hit, hit someone so hard oh, it breaks sure, the neck. I'm sure. But why Why would you want to see that? What's, what's wrong well, with Because you? I don't like you. Well, get the hell out of here. And I would, I would pay him $9 million. Talk moving about on, a show. Moving on. Speaking of fights. So UFC had their event. Oh, yeah. 232. <laughs> that piece of trash, John Jones, he won his match. Really? They move the venue. Yeah, this guy because he, he he was you know caught with because he's in a his cheater again because he's a cheater, he's a dirty old cheater. He won his match, but that wasn't the match of the night. And I told you from the, I told the whole world what was going to happen. Yeah, my girl Amanda Nunes. She had the fight of the year, fight of the, the century against uh, Chris Cyborg. So this is the greatest women's fighters fighting each other. She beat Cyborg in less than fifty seconds. Really beat the hell out of her. Just the same way she that. did to to Ronda Rousey, by the way. I mean, literally beat the hell yeah, out of her. Yeah, she's unstoppable. Dude, she's the greatest of all time. Well, here's the thing. Because she's so good, she doesn't have to fall back on a career in wrestling like Ronda Rousey. And I couldn't hack it. Cyborg probably will do the same thing. Well, she's already got the cool she, name. She knocks people out of out into retirement. That's Could they what give she her does. like this cool like cyborg makeup? That may be. That may be. But it's funny because- <laughs> Excuse me, I got a cough. After she uh-huh. won the match, she says, Dana White has to put me in the Hall of Fame now. And everyone's like, well, yeah. Like, what? <laughs> you what she beat care? everybody. She should, oh, just, think, she should go knock him out, too, I, while she's at it. Well, here's the problem. She got paid the least amount of money out of everybody who was at the top of the car. Because she's a woman. Now, now, she's a champion. Yeah. Everybody else got paid at least a half a million dollars up front. Does MMA ever do uh, man versus woman? No. And I don't think we'll ever see that. I don't think so. Do You don't think she could beat a dude? I know she could beat a dude. I, she could probably beat the majority of the company. She's that great. That's what I'm she's saying. She's not good. She's great. Why don't we see? That's what you want to but see. But that's the problem. They're afraid of that. Oh, because the men suddenly become <sighs> mortal. You know what it is? And I was talking to somebody today about this. We're talking about uh, you know Congress and the, all the new women that are in the House of Representatives and a woman speaker of the House once again. And a friend of mine said, you know what? Let the women take over. Yeah. Do you know why? And, I, and we were talking. Because there'd be no war. War is a guy thing. War is just measuring your dick, really. In the end, let's just bring it right down to the base. Women would figure it out. But also, if you fucked with them, they would be total annihilation. There would be no second guessing a woman. Quick and clean. Quick, clean. You're dead. Boom. Dead. Dead. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let them run everything. That's I what I say. I agree. So in this case, she's fighting like she's already dead. She's unstoppable she, because it's all up here. She told everybody. I knew I could win. Yeah. I knew it. Which, she visioned it. It's very scary. She made it happen. Because the odds, I think she was like a I think it was like a two hundred and fifty point underdog. Really? Can you, can you imagine you, you would win two hundred and fifty dollars for every dollar you bet if she won? And she did win. I would have put money on that. That but this is what I'm saying. Like the odds were just were astronomical. I always go against you, but on that I would have put money on Dude, that. She she was like, No, I knew I was gonna win. I knew it. And and the way that she won, it was so tremendous. It was like, oh Well, yeah, it was with it was without question. Yeah. Yeah, there was nothing. You couldn't do anything with that. She won. It was. So shout out to Amanda Nunes. She destroyed the whole sport. Ten years of of, of, well, here's the thing. of women built up, gone. She took them all out. At the moment, there's no woman that can unseat her. They don't. I don't even think that woman is born. Like she doesn't That's what exist I'm saying. So, here, so what do they do? They're going to have to lock her out. Because well, they ain't going to have her start happen. taking the heads off the men, this like is, you said. This is the problem. Who do you put her in against? Do you, you can't get Rousey out of retirement. Maybe you can get Cyborg to fight again, but she'll lose again. <laughs> There's nobody left to beat her. You're going to have to find some Olympian and, who's willing to get killed. It, and who's willing to get killed. And that's what will happen. And, and, and right, get their career. Yeah, but at least they have name recognition. I don't know. It's pretty crazy. So I, I, I was impressed by that. Uh, I love Amanda Nunes. I think she's awesome. The Lioness, she's great. 
There's talk of a new promotion, Boston Bad Boy. Oh, yeah? All Elite Wrestling. Your, your buddy Cody Rhodes. Ah. Him and the Young Bucks, they they linked up with the the son of the owner of the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars football team. Mm-hmm. Um, they're going to start a new promotion. So they made the official announcement, and we're waiting for more information. They probably signed a TV deal and all that stuff, but it's interesting. Yeah, I mean, you know? um, these guys know a lot more about the business in the inside baseball. Sure. Right? Sure. So you'd have to, if you say, okay, we've got all these big promotions, WWE at the top, obviously, and whatever. What's the value in doing? There has, they have to see some value in it, other than it's just a pipe dream. You know I what think, I mean? I, there has to be some you, business. I think there's a pipe dream going on there. I think the son is just such a big wrestling fan; he's willing to. Well, you have to have that enthusiasm. But yeah. what I'm saying is, from a business standpoint, mm-hmm. you can't be completely out to left field. You know what I mean? There's, they have to see some niche for it. I look at it this way. It's taking you don't want to wrestling. admit you don't want to admit that potentially there's people starting to put themselves in positions for the inevitable fall of the WWE, which is coming as Vince McMahon gets slapped in the face and punched don't around more correct. and more and don't more start and starts to lose control. Of don't the company. talk about my friends Vince McMahon like because that. here's the that. thing: no. it's the WWE is lightning in a bottle, and that is Vince. When he's gone, it loses something no matter what. Mm-hmm. You you won't be able to a replicate it. And it will change. It will change. And it may not change. It's going to take a long time. You think so. But stranger things have happened with I don't, the companies. I don't believe in that at all. Of course I'm, you don't, because I'm, you don't like reality. I don't know who these guys can sign. That's the other issue. In order to fill out a whole wrestling promotion roster. So that'll be interesting to see mm-hmm. how they pull that off. But, you know, good luck to them. I hope it works out for them. Uh, this weekend, in fact, on Friday, Wrestle Kingdom is happening for uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling. It's uh-huh. their WrestleMania. They, they do in the beginning of January. Uh, should be interesting. Kenny Omega, who's the champion, he's going up against um, Tanahashi, who's like the Shawn Michaels of mm-hmm. New Japan Pro Wrestling. There's speculation that the Japanese guy is going to win because, <laughs> you know, you got to give it back to the old man. Well, yeah, I mean, you got to give it to the, give the people what they want. Give the people what they want. But this is what's interesting. Three in the morning, you're going to have to be up in order to watch that thing if you want to watch it live mm. because of the time difference. Right. Or you can wait, and Friday evening, Access TV is going to air it. Hmm. Mark Cuban owns Access TV. Mark Cuban's an interesting fellow. Smart man. He's a smart guy. Yep. I don't know that, um, <clears throat> I probably don't agree with him on a million things, on everything. But he's smart enough to be like one of these multi-millionaire guys who's savvy and shows it a bit, mm. but not over the top. In other words, you and I have always said, if we had a big zillion dollars, we'd gone. We'd disappear. A guy like that who's in business can't be, you know, he can't be that. No, of course not. He's got to be the face. But he's also got to kind of like not, he can be Trump. You know what I mean? <laughs> you can't, and you can't be Elon Musk. Mm. You, you have no, to hold it can't together. can't go all the way there. No yeah, way. So I think he does a good job at that. Mm. And it's hard to be a multi-millionaire one percenter and be likable. And somehow he pulls it off. He pulls it off perfectly. Flawlessly. Flawlessly. Yeah. So, you know, uh, you know uh, I'm sure he's a good dude. I don't know. But I think that, uh, yeah, I didn't realize that he owned the Access TV. Oh, yeah, that's him. That's him. Speaking of of likable, you know what? Let, let's just stop uh, prolonging this. Let's get our guest on the line right there because I see the uh, button lighting up. Hello. Welcome to the Duke Loves Wrestling podcast, Sophie Castillo. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm fantastic. Now, listen, I have to warn you ahead of time. Mm. Uh, the Boston bad boy is, is still getting over his cold over there. So yep. if he coughs in your ear, I apologize. I will not cough in your ear. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> so, Champ, how's it going? How's the new year treating you so far? It's amazing. I actually just got back from California for Christmas and my birthday, and we had so much fun. It's interesting to me because... Um, you're you're still pretty young in the business. Uh, you you've been wrestling for a couple years now, but you've already won your first championship. Tell us about that. Yeah, it's a promotion called Go Wrestle. It's up in Daytona here in Florida, and I became their champion about I'd say about six months ago. Wow, wow! So who are yeah. some of your your biggest competitors uh, in in that organization? Uh, Natalia Markova was a really really tough one. She is an amazing wrestler. She's from Russia. Very, very rough. Um, that was a tough one, but I really enjoyed it. Um, there's a girl named Kylan, Tyler Moore. They're both really good competitors. Ah, wow, that's that's pretty cool. Because you know, mm. you live an interesting life, uh, Sophie. Because in addition to being a pro wrestling champion, you're also a pretty well accomplished dancer. 
and and you've been doing dance uh, since you were a, a young child here. Well, tell us a, a, about the importance of um, some of the things that you learned in, in dance and, and how that's helped you uh, in the wrestling ring. Well, I began dancing until uh, I began dancing when I was seven back in Costa Rica, and back then I didn't know that I wanted to be a wrestler. But uh, dancing is something that has always taught me in a way, and I've always felt safe dancing. It taught me so much discipline that you need in this business, and since they're both sort of entertainment. There are so many highs and lows in dancing, and there is so much, quote-unquote, peer pressure, and there are so many things that you should abide by according to what people tell you, how you should look, what you should do. And I feel like making you, like, develop a rough skin has helped me a lot in wrestling, other than the whole balance and footwork and muscle memory and knowing how to move and knowing how to let other people move me. And, 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 you know, in dancing, I know depending on the type of dance that you do, they do pay a lot of attention to weight and things of that nature. Um, how does that affect you today since you've already started dealing with the peer pressure of having to maintain a certain weight and what have you? Does that translate at all into pro wrestling or is that something that you've uh, figured out and, and you don't even pay attention to? At the beginning, it did. Uh, for a few years in dancing, I was very – driven into having like a very thin body frame but that's I didn't know back then but that's not something I like I like for a woman's body to be a little bit more curvier and have a little bit more of shape as opposed to being so light because I feel like there's just it doesn't look as good as it could and as long as you know how to distribute your weight in dancing and wrestling and how to be light and how to be able to be moved easily it doesn't matter how much you weigh and I don't like and I don't like stereotypes. I don't like thinking that for you to be a dancer, you have to be so thin and have this perfect little body. And wrestlers, female wrestlers have to be thin, but also must. I don't like that. I like being who I am. I like my own body. And I don't expect for anybody to try and change that for me because I'm probably not going to do it because I'm happy with how I look now. And it took a while. And now I'm very proud of it. So I don't see why I would change that's that's a heck of a statement there because you know in in the modern day uh one of the issues that we're seeing is social media being something that is used as a tool especially by people who call themselves fans so-called fans uh to really put down the wrestlers and and for the female wrestlers in particular uh there's always statements about how they look and 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 weight and things of that nature there uh, have you encountered any issues with with obnoxious fans online? And and if you if you have, what are some uh, tips that you can give to others about how to deal with something like that? A hundred percent, I have dealt with that. Ever since day one that I started wrestling, um, I've gotten comments that either I am too thin, or I should lose weight, or I should gain more muscle, I should wear makeup, I should wear my hair different. Why do I wear this? Why do I look like that? But here's what people don't realize the people that say these comments are not the ones in the position that we're at they're not the ones having to put their body in the line for entertainment and they're not the ones that have a passion for this the way that we do so much so that we're willing to do all these dangerous moves for the entertainment of others mm. wow. and if you like if you were if i were to give any advice people it's really easy for people to judge when they're not the ones doing a certain thing. It's really easy for people to call you names and it's really easy for people to have opinions, but you can't let that get to you because if you start living your life based on what other people think you should be doing, you're not going to end up doing what you love and you're not going to end up living your life. You're going to end up being another person that you don't want to be and you'll grow up to resent. And that's just not, a way of living and so yes comments will come your way yes opinions will come your way but you can't let that get to you and you just have to stay true to who you are and that's something that i've always valued now a lot. I, I say a lot of mean things to duke but they are in fact true so a, if i say mean <laughs> things to him that are true and there are things about him that he does have to change i mean i think you could back me on that and maybe you could be the muscle behind my threats is that possible at all <laughs> If it's between friends and it's a friendly <laughs> argument, we're not friendly friends. opinion. No, yeah. We're not friends. It's just this strictly business arrangement. So I know that one of your other skills among many 
is uh, sign language, um, right. which I'm always I'm always enthralled by people who can do that. And I actually was telling Duke in the last week's episode that I know only one sign, and I keep doing it to him. Stop that! And it's bullshit. She heard that. Stop and so that. <laughs> she heard yeah, me. Heard she heard that. me doing the sign. Across, yeah, right. She heard me over the phone. But I was wondering um, if there's any other signs you could teach me right now over the phone. You know that uh, that I could use to insult Duke. Unbelievable. I am definitely not teaching you insults. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. I am not in a position to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. You know, it's... I can teach you the I love you sign. See that? Now, see, I would, you know, I'm not going to give that to Duke, but, you know, if you said it to me, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely, right I'm, all, I'm open to that, Sophie. I really right am. Now. I'd really appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> I, so, you know, he brings up a good point here, Sophie. Have you ever had a situation where a pro wrestling promoter has tried to get you to do any kind of crazy angles having to do with, with um, sign language or deaf folks or anything like that? Yes. I had a guy that heard that I knew sign language that in a joking manner sort of mm. very strongly suggested um, that I should come out into the ring and wrestle as if I was deaf. Oh and God. then when I win, magically gain my hearing. Oh. <laughs> and I was... So, so, so upset. Wow. I didn't wrestle for that company, actually. We, we've we heard a lot of wacky stories, and I, I'm sure we haven't even heard a, a tenth of what's out there. That is one of the most insane things Isn't I've ever that heard. Ridiculous? That's one of the most insane things I've ever heard. That's like saying, come out in a wheelchair, and then when you win, you're miraculously you walk again like you're on some televangelist TV show. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Like people, a lot of people don't have cultural sensitivity and just common sense altogether. And I know that sounds mean, but it's also true. Absolutely, and it's interesting. I don't know because I don't watch wrestling. I I I don't like wrestling. I like you. Too good. I yeah. I I am too good. I'm mostly too good, Um, but but not for you, Sophie. Um, So do they? I assume like WWF is closed captioned. Yeah. But do they ever have the person signing like when they're doing because a lot of stuff is done live off the cuff. I wonder if they have that kind of thing. And, and should they in the crowd, in the stadiums? What are the people who are there uh, at the actual events? Are you asking me for WWE specifically? No, I'm just saying, do you do you ever see that a and do you think there's a, a real need for that? Because it seems to me that there should be there, there is. Yes, and yes. I actually had the opportunity to um, interpret the national anthem for a magic game. Oh, that's cool. Here in Florida, and so how it works is they put you in the big screen in a little corner, Mm -hmm. and that is so important because a lot of people that are not involved in the deaf community forget that deaf people exist, and they still do the things that hearing people do, and there is such a need to have, to sort of, not facilitate, but to have someone that interprets that communication between one and the other because there's something called um, cultural equivalence. So my job is for the hearing person and the deaf person to have access to the same information. Sure. And I do think there's a huge need for things to be either shows or whatever you want to call it to be closed captioned or to have interpreters available. Well, I find it fascinating because I don't know where I was. I was at um, some kind of a live event. I don't think it was theater because I hate theater, but it was something like <laughs> theater. It was, a mu- I, mean, I don't know, I was stuck, I don't know where I was. But down on the right-hand side of the stage, in the orchestra pit, were the signers. Mm. And they were lit up, and there was three of them, and it was like a marathon. I was fascinated watching because it's very physical work, especially if there's a lot happening and a lot going on, and they have to like take a break and trade off, and the next person jumps in and goes. I mean, I found it as somebody who can hear, uh, very interesting. And it made sense because if you're somebody going and you, you're with somebody, you're on a date, you're with your family, they should be able to experience that. And I think wrestling has an opportunity too. Because it's so live, maybe closed captioning on TV doesn't work all the time. Or in, in a live event, they're, they're always in a, in a venue. They're never doing it in a studio necessarily. They should, they should be more focused on something like this. I don't think necessarily they should like interpret the what they're saying in commentary, I think that when they're doing promos, right, exactly. that should be interpreted because you can't have me interpret things while there's a wrestling match next to me because then <laughs> right. you're not going to look at me at all. Or right. even worse, you're right. going to look at me and not pay attention to what's going on in the ring. Well, and, and maybe we could make a comment on the fact that if the wrestling is good enough, you don't really need the color commentary. I mean, right. it adds to it. Yep. But if the wrestling is good and the, and the act is good and the, the athletics are good, 
uh, you know, someone can enjoy. Like you said, the promos are the fun part. That's what you want someone to make sure that they're included in for the storyline and everything else. Right. We're talking to Sophie Castillo, a wrestling champion and sign language interpreter, a dance instructor. She's going to teach me yards. all those signs so I can be mean to you. She's and people, not going to do that. Because I won't even have to say it on the mic. <laughs> it's just gonna, yeah, you, I'm just going to sign to him while I'm sitting here, and he's just going to be insulted. She's not gonna It'll be great. That. You, you brought up something that was interesting that I, I hadn't heard before, Sophie. You, you talked about cultural sensitivity as it relates to uh, deaf people in, 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 in signing. Expand mm-hmm. upon that a little bit more because, you know, when we when we think about cultural so- sensitivity, we, we think about nationality and, and, and race and things of that nature, but you're applying that terminology to, to deaf folks. So expand upon that, please. Well, for sure. When people hear these terms of cultural sensitivity, they do think like words like sexuality, religion, nationality, uh, sexual preference, as I said, like things like these pop in, pop in their mind, but they never really think of what a deaf person goes through. And mind you, I personally can't tell you what they go through because I'm not deaf. But being involved in the community, I've had, I've had experiences that show me how hard it can be to live in a world that's predominantly hearing. Yeah, well, I mean, I think it's because it's so you, you can't see it. If someone is in a wheelchair, well, we build them a ramp. If somebody is, is even if somebody is blind, you know, okay, we need to make it accessible because they can't see. Hearing is so invisible, and almost people think, well, okay, how, I, I hate to say this, because I think a lot of people think, well, how really bad, you know, sure. well, you can't, yeah. but it's, it's I, it would be horrifying. If I ever lost my hearing, I, 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 I don't know if I could deal. And, and I think you're absolutely right. The inclusion, to make people feel like they're part of the fabric of everyday life is hugely, hugely important. Well, you mentioned if you were to go like to go deaf or lose your hearing, you sure. wouldn't know what to do. I disagree because if you meet deaf people, they are so proud of their culture and they're so proud to be deaf, of knowing sign language and being a part of this sure. beautiful community that it's it's amazing. And if so, there are different types of deafness. You can either mm-hmm. be born deaf or lose your hearing one way or the other. If that happens. You can still learn sign language. You can still be involved right. in the deaf community and identify yourself as a deaf person. And they're so proud of it. I I love it. And I think it's something I admire and I well, and, and that, need to learn from. And that's the result of people putting in the work, right, to create that community and to support that. And it needs to continue and to grow because, again, it's easy for people to sort of look the other way on that because it's not something so visible. Right. And, and Sophie, you, you have an interesting story even beyond that because... You're originally from Costa Rica, yes. and how long have you been speaking English fluently? Fluently in a confident manner where I feel like I can hold up a conversation without getting an anxiety attack right before <laughs> four years. Wow, that's three years longer than Duke. I, well, I'm still Congratulations. learning. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, he's still learning. Talk to us about the transition from uh, Costa Rica to the United States, because I, I'm, I'm pretty sure we're talking about you know, cultural things and what have you, you must have been pretty shell-shocked to go from, you know, living on an island and what have you to being here. It, give us some background on that. <laughs> it's not an island, though. It's a country. <laughs> I, you know what? I was going to say it, but I wanted you to say it you instead. When, when I was I sitting here Rica, looking at him when he said island. island life. I, you no. Know, that's, that's my no, Costa Rica is, an, is a country that's, that's on its land. It's that's on my, land. That's my ignorance. Okay. Yeah, so, it's a country. You know what? He watched Jurassic Park, and he thinks that that's all of Costa Rica, <laughs> that it's on an island with dinosaurs. On Don't tell all my secrets. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> well, from one country to another, because I'm not I'm not a person that's lived anywhere else but here. So You're not even living in reality. So let's start there. I'm from Mars. Um, I am, I'm still culture shocked. I made the move with my mom. Uh, it's only the two of us four years ago and we left everything behind. We came here for me to have a better education because we both needed a change. And because I wanted to become a professional wrestler and in Costa Rica, that is not a thing that you could do. And so, uh, we packed our bags, we said goodbye and we moved to this country where I was very very much shocked because growing up in a third world country where we're surrounded by so much poverty and so many things going on around us when i get here to finish high school and i'm handed a laptop i I was very confused like and if you think about it in a school my school had it works differently over there but my school had 400 people from seventh grade to 11th grade because we don't have 12. um 
and when I come here and they're giving us laptops and it's 2,200 students per school and you think of the whole country getting it's just ridiculous to me like we have books we don't need to spend this much money and these many funds and laptops that we could be putting for a better use so I was I was very confused and then a lot of people I don't know I don't want to say things that are going to sound mean but uh people that come from different countries into the state that come here for a better life and better jobs and better education. We put in a lot of work because we have a certain standard to live up to. And we have a certain amount of things that we need to get done that people that are fortunate love to be born here. Don't have to worry about. They take it for granted. Sure. Right. And, Right. Well, and 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 that's uh, and that's that's an interesting point with this with this country in particular. It, it has always been the immigrant that has pushed this country to the next level. It has never been the exactly. people who have been here um, because there is a certain complacency that happens, and people do it without even realizing it. You know, I, I'm born here. I don't realize. Oh, you're la- okay. You know what I mean? Like, if you're sm- if you're if you're brought up right, I think if you're you know if you if you are. <clears throat> have access to good education, you start to see that, oh, wow, I have a lot of these advantages. I better better get used to it and, and take advantage of them um, because not everybody has this. But it's, it's, it's almost easier for the person coming from somewhere else to see all those advantages and actually use them because they're not taking it for granted. Mm. Um, so that, that's pretty amazing. I, I, I like how you picked up on that because this is a nation – uh, of excess. This is a well. When people say America is the the richest country in the world, you don't really realize that until you go somewhere else, and then you come back yeah. here and you see, oh wow, yeah, You're giving away laptops, giving away. La- <laughs> well, just in all in big ways and in very small ways like that. Um, but Sophie, I want to I want to backpedal a little bit because you said two things that I thought were kind of funny. You said I wanted to be a professional wrestler, and my mom was like, all right, let's go. We're moving to America. So I want to know wh- where no, this... No, no, <laughs> well, well, no. So no. explain to me then, because the way you said it was pretty funny. Um, it, it, I want to know where this professional wrestling idea came from, and I want to know how you convinced mom to go along with it. Dude, this is me giving you a quick story. <laughs> no, it wasn't that easy. <laughs> um, so back home, we have one hour of Raw, one hour of SmackDown, and that's it for wrestling. That There's sounds, no that sounds perfect, by the way. That's yeah. all you need. Don't start that. In America, again, Don't excessive and unnecessary. Boy, stop that. But continue. <laughs> Don't let me interrupt. There's no New Japan. There's no independent. There's nothing. It's just one hour of Raw, one hour of SmackDown. And I began re- watching it when I was 10. But since it was only one hour, they would only get the main events and the highlights of the show. So women were not a part of wrestling at all and if they were it would be pillow fights it would be (laughs) mud fights it would be not wrestling taken seriously at all and at a young age of 10 years old i thought this was very wrong and very sexist in a way wow and here i was at 10 looking up to my mother and saying hey mom i want to be one of those and she's like yeah right i'm like you know i mean like like the guys, like they're wrestling, like in the ring. And she said, Sophie, <laughs> no, you're insane. And this is just a phase and it'll pass. I was like, uh, okay. And then 11 came around and I said the same thing. And she said, it's a phase, it'll pass. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I told her again. She's like, wow, you're really still like with this idea. I'm like, yeah. Cause... Now, now in the, in the middle of this, you having this idea and your bug, uh, what are you, are you doing any, how, how are you, what are you doing on your own to, to push it along for yourself? Are you training? Are you talking to people? What, you know, other than just saying it, what, what, what were you doing? Well, there was no, there are no wrestling schools over there. Only one that recently opened up, but mm-hmm. back then there was none. Um, I told people at school and they decided I was a crazy lady. So <laughs> there went my friends. I told my family and they decided that I had gone insane. So you just so, kept it. So you just kept it as a dream. You were just, just doing what you were doing and also just saying, I really want to do this. I want to do it. I want to do it. Right, and I feel like if you believe in something hard enough and if you really truly believe it in your heart and you work for it, things happen to come true. Right. And dreams happen to come true. And then uh, my my mom and my dad have been the two people that have been supportive about it. And so when we were talking about moving, my mom was really on the fence. I came to my dad. I was like, Dad. I need you to like pull some magic and convince her. And so he did. And when she finally said yes, and we moved here, I was like, okay. And I sat down and I like 
I took a breath and I realized everything that was happening. Because in the crazy, like within the crazy situations of getting your citizenship, do this, mm-hmm. get these papers, get that pass, get that. So with everything going on and trying to find a school and a house, you don't think about why you're doing what you're doing. Right. But once you get here and you're settled down, it's like, oh, oh God, now this is serious. So were you, were you guys thinking of moving anyway, or was this really like a major sort of impetus for you to guys to, to come here? My mom offered, because my mom was born in New York, Mm -hmm. uh, she offered me if I wanted Ah, to try moving here for a, no, 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 but she offered me this when I was like 12, Mm -hmm. and I was not ready to leave my dad and my family at that point, so I was like, no, and then I was like, okay, I'm ready, like at 14, and she was like, no, now I have my things going on, we can't move. (laughs) At 16, things happened to just work for both of us, and we were like, okay, this is a huge deal. Do we want to do it? And I really wanted to do it because if you want to make a change, you have to, you have to, you have to make sacrifices. Yep, you do. That's an amazing story. I really, I think that's very cool. And the fact that you had an opportunity and took it. It's one thing to have the opportunity and not take it. It's one thing to not have the opportunity. But for the two things to line up where you can actually say, you know what? We're going to do it. And your mom's like, all right, I guess finally we're going to do it. (laughs) We're going, we're going, we're into it. And now you're actually doing it. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, thank you. So for all the listeners out there, just keep bugging your mom until she says yes. That's the, that's the main <laughs> that's idea That's the moral there. of the story, kids. Absolutely. <laughs> Sophie, if, if fans want to see you in action, I mean, do you have any uh, events coming up? When, when's the next time we can see you wrestle? Tomorrow. <laughs> if you're in Orlando, come see me. I will be tomorrow at I Believe in Wrestling. I Believe in Wrestling. That's the name of the promotion mm-hmm. there. Uh, and mm-hmm. that's tomorrow, Friday. Do you know where it's going to be? Yes, it's in Orlando. It's in Narcusi Road and Lee Vista. Perfect. Perfect. I, think I can get a flight down. Stop it. Are she's going to teach me all the sign language so I can insult gonna, you. She's going to teach you to shut your face. That's what it is. <laughs> you know. You, you know. We should. We should uh, just cover his ears so he can. He can understand. Yeah. Uh, Why don't we cover your mouth so that the rest of us can understand? Stop it right now. If if fans or, or bookers want to get in touch with you, in fact. I'm going to throw this out there because I, I, I have an interesting concept here. You, oh, you, boy. You're doing the sign language. You, you've done it at an Orlando Magic game, and you, you've done it in front of, of literally thousands of people. If folks want to utilize you as a, a signing and interpreter or what have you, what's the best way to reach out to you? Um, for signing purposes, I wouldn't recommend reaching me yet <laughs> just because <laughs> I want to finish my degree, but – if bookers want to get in touch with me, if that's the core of your question, um, you can shoot me a message through Facebook, which is Sophia, S-O-F-I-A, Ramirez Castillo, or you can uh, send me a message on Instagram. It'll be Sophie, S-O-F-I, underscore, Ramirez Castillo, 39. There it is. There it is. And, and do you have any goals for the, for the uh, new year, especially in the wrestling business? Get better at wrestling, stay humble, graduate from college. Beautiful. Perfect. Perfect. Her name is Sophie Ramirez Castillo. You are going to have a fantastic year, and I think you're going to win more championships. And um, I don't want to know any of the, of the swear words in sign language, but if you can teach me <laughs> some of the words to tell the Boston bad boy to shut up, I, I would appreciate that. I'm going, to learn, I'm going to learn the sign language to please come help me beat up Duke, and I'm going to send a video to her. I can run faster that. than her, please. Thank you, Sophie. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> oh, I like the little laugh. Stop it. I listen. Stop it right now. You were flirting with that girl <sighs> the whole time too. Oh, yeah, I know. She could she could destroy you. I know, that's kind of what I like about I, it. I know, you do like that stuff. It's so, <laughs> so weird to me. Jesus Christ. Yeah, you know what? You're too delicate. That's your problem. Oh, yeah? You're not hardened to the world like I am. Oh, is that what the that's problem right. is? Wow. So you've got you nothing. Somebody to beat you're you down. soft. Wow. Yeah. You can't go toe to toe. No, I don't want to go toe to toe. She's she's bigger, stronger, faster. Most people are that. She can to do you. sign language. I can't do it. She you speaks multiple languages. You can barely speak. You know what? Primary language. Sophie Ramirez Castillo. She is Bond. You She's think so? an international woman of mystery. Oh, so she could be Bond, and I could be the Bond girl. You could be the Bond girl. I'm, I'm Look at handsome that. arm candy. Look, at I'm that. fine with that. I'm telling you, I'm 100 percent fine with that. Wow. Huh? There it is. Throw it out there. You figured it out. <laughs> the secret to life. I'm telling you. All right, Boston bad boy. I, mm. I have to. Uh, I've been holding back on this, but I'm just gonna. We'll end the show on this note here. All right. Got to give a special uh, rest in peace to one of the greatest to ever do it. Mm-hmm. A guy that was such a major part of all of our childhoods, literally the greatest voice in pro wrestling history. 
Mean Gene Oakland. Yep. Passed away yesterday, officially. Uh, and, I mean, just everybody, anybody and everybody has a Mean Gene story and, and talks about um, the impression that they put, the impression that he put upon them. I mean, he was a backstage interviewer for the AWA, the WWE, later WCW. Did a lot of voiceover work and what have you as well. But just overall, with the mustache and the bald head, some of the things he did with with Hulk Hogan and, and Ric Flair in particular, some of the best stuff you ever you ever seen in your life. Just really entertaining, interesting. Gene was like the journalist, the TV journalist. Well, Gene's the ultimate straight man. Yes. In the in the insanity that was professional wrestling, yes, yes. it was like he was a war correspondent. Yep, dropped in the middle of the madness, and he's he was just straight ahead, straight, always straight. Yep. He, he never acknowledged that any of it was ridiculous, mm-hmm. silly, or implausible. It was always treated as if it was real. Yes, as if it was really happening. It was all there. He sold it, and it's. I, I think it's no small thing to say. That without that ability, without him being such a natural talent and also being there for so long, there is no WWE now as we know it. Fact. Because as we've talked about before, the sell is a multifaceted thing. It's the guy in the ring. It's the promo. It's the move. It's the commentary. It's the crowd reaction. It's the camera angle. It's the walk-on music. It's all part of a system. And as the voice, as your surrogate there the person who's reporting it to you live mm. that's it, it's got to be 90 percent of the cell 100 percent, 100 percent. because he would lead you in the in the promo as well that's right you know what i mean right he would set them up with things so even if you forgot your line or forgot what you wanted right. to say he would lead them. and how important was that i mean we know these guys flair and Ho- the, the, the legends promo experts yep. but even that it was all done mostly off the cuff yes so for him to remain straight, for him to let them do what they need to do mm. and help them along the way, by the straighter he went, the more absurd <laughs> yep. their promo is, yep. and the more scary it seems, and he's scared, and I don't know what's going to happen, back yep. to you. Boom. You get swept up in that as the viewer. And so, um, yeah, I, I think that it's a huge loss. I think you don't get somebody like that ever again. Mm. I think that... Uh, because of the style, because what it brought to it. So, yeah, a, a, a big loss, a big loss. He's up there with the Macho Man and Bobby the Brain Heenan and, and Vader and so many other guys well, we've lost. They finally got a guy that can call a match. There it is. Can you? <laughs> well, a guy who can who can help uh, the promo. That's right. Yeah, he's gonna help the promo and yeah. do, do it all. Yeah, sell tickets. <laughs> I'm sure God's going to pay for those tickets, man. He wants to see what's going to happen. Because me and Gene, back to you, like you said. He's That's just, right. man, I, We'll miss you, Gene. And uh, shout out to his family uh, and all, everyone who was touched by him. Just, boy. In fact, if you head over to the Duke Loves Wrestling uh, Facebook and the Twitter, we'll, we'll be putting up uh, Mean Gene Oakland clips and things uh, from the past, especially for you younger fans, just so you can see. And, and even folks who haven't watched wrestling in a while, a little piece of your childhood right there. With that said, take it away, Tony Giovanni. This is Tony Giovanni, and we're desperately out of time on Duke Love Wrestling.